Welcome back to another episode of the Growth Mindset Podcast. In this episode, I'm interviewing Frank Dick. He was the head coach of the British athletic team for 15 years, taking them through many Olympics. He also coached Boris Becker and the England Rugby World Cup team, amongst many other endeavours that will start to get pretty silly if I list all of them. He is also the author of the book Winning, which is a brilliant read on the psychology of achieving your goals, and the personal favourite of my parents and mine whilst I was growing up. So it really was an honour to meet him, and my mum is very proud of me for this episode. I can't even tell you. Anyway, in this interview, we start with Frank explaining the differences between a victim and a victim mindset. And I think this is a really important lesson that anyone that's into their mindsets is going to really enjoy, hence uh, why it's on the podcast, because that's what we're about here. And the whole episode's great, but make sure you listen to the end part, because that's like the most crucial part around how to like embody all the lessons that he's explaining so without further ado this is frank dick giving an absolute mindset overhaul lesson thing on um the victim and victim mindset so in your book you talk about like valley people and mountain people and so the valley people are kind of people with a victim mindset that think sort of the world is happening they can't change it and they kind of they just try to not lose whereas someone who's like got more of a, a victor mindset is like shooting to win and like believes they can do things how do you coach someone from feeling like more of a victim of the world to being a victor of the world well first of all if you think about it when you're trying to move forward in any aspect of your life you'll actually step beyond where you've been by, by definition right you've got to step beyond the, the comfort of where you are now to try to move yourself forward. And that's new territory, for goodness sake. You're into a new world there. And that's why I call it taking the risk of winning. You've got to be able to step before that, beyond that. And in order for people to be comfortable doing that in life, what you've got to be able to do is have them understand about mistakes and stumbles. If you never make a mistake in life, you've never had a dream that you've been trying to move towards. If you never stumble in life, you've never dared to make yourself better. And the issue with the mistakes and with the stumbles is that be okay with that because they're going to happen. If they don't happen, you've not dared anything and you've not dreamt anything. So I used to say to my my daughters all the time, failure is not about falling off your bike. Failure is when you don't get back in your bike and pedal even harder. And if we don't make mistakes, they say you'll not be given the opportunity to learn from that. You might think, well, that's a nice throwaway line, but let's imagine this. I'd push you to do something to take yourself forward and you get it wrong, right? Now, Mm. the fact is, when you get something wrong, you're given an opportunity to learn to do it better or do it differently, right? Sometimes when you're always getting it right, we actually are turning a blind eye to a couple of bits and pieces that, let's face it, if they hadn't fallen in place, you might have had a problem. So as you go through the whole notion of reflection, the point I made to you earlier on about the four R's, is that you've got to be willing to reflect when it's going right and when it's going wrong, right? If you don't know why it's going right, then it was an accident. You've got to be able to look at why it's going right and what may not have helped it going right so that you can look at that as a lesson because we're probably pretty quick at saying, well, something goes wrong. Remember I said earlier, when you have a mistake, when you have a flaw, you can form in that straight away because it looks pretty obvious. I can work on that. You've got to be able to make mistakes, get it right, but you've got to be able to reflect on both of them. And if you're not making mistakes, you're not pushing hard enough. Yeah, there's a common problem that when, as, in, as a human flaw, you sort of, when things are going right, you kind of blame like yourself. It's like, oh, because I'm great. But then also when things are going wrong, you kind of, like blame other people like oh people are like mean to me or they're not helping me with this and it's just like an interesting issue the way we look at stuff there's also lots of old sayings in life that i guess when you hear them the first time you think yeah what what does that mean remember the old saying you've got to fix the roof when the sun's shining i feel like i probably heard it it sounds familiar that i wouldn't have said i remembered it but why (laughs) it sounds good why would you do that Are you going to wait till it rains till you realize there's a problem? Mm. If you know the roof needs fixing, 
and you won't know it needs fixing until everything's going absolutely right. And you think, look, if that continues up there, we will have a problem in the future. So you cannot be seduced by it going well. That's a big, big mistake in life. When it's going well, what would make it go better? What might stop it going better? And can we address these two things? Yeah, it's funny. Like you said about these sort of like timeless sayings that I read your book first when I was like 16 and that I, I liked it, but I was like, oh, there's so much things. It's just, it's just all quite obvious. But then like I read it again, like a, sort of a few years ago and was like, oh my God, <laughs> I've made all these mistakes. <laughs> and and it's sort of as you get a bit older, you realize that actually like you sort of mess up all these obvious things and you actually really need to think much more deeply about them and just sort of, yeah, made me realize this. Well, thanks for reading it twice. But one of the things that I think, if I'm going to pride myself in life as being a not bad teacher, right? How do you identify somebody as a good teacher at the end of the day? I think it's they, they make you aware of what you already know. You get to a situation where you read a book or you listen to a conversation, and say, "Well, I knew that," but well, now that I've reminded you of what you know, what are you going to do with it? Because yeah. sometimes you're right. I mean, what have I said today that isn't anything other than common sense? So it's everything I've said to you, you knew already. And I'd like to think all the people who will join in your podcast will have known already. All I'll ask you to do now then is, having got to that point of reflection, what's your response going to be at the fourth R? Yeah, yeah, this is all about then going on to take action. And yeah, one thing I've been also thinking about is there's, have you heard of like the Jungian theory, I think it is, where he talks about like known knowns known unknowns then unknown unknowns but they never talk about unknown knowns as in the thing that you kind of know inside you because you have all the information already there but you just never really put the connections together well they're just talking about knowns and unknowns and things one one of the things that that i should maybe should have mentioned a little bit earlier is that as a coach you should actually take a bit of time every now and again you're working with a young person or somebody or somebody in business or or in sport or whatever You're, you're coaching them but you must never make the person you're coaching the victim of your limitations. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is you have to take time to know what you know. You've got to be able to know, if you like, accept what you don't know. And you've got to be able to know somebody who does and bring them into the party. And so in life, it, I think it's, just as I said to my two daughters as they were growing up, I said, it's not a sign of ignorance to ask a question. It's actually a sign of intelligence. It's not an acknowledgement of failure uh, to ask for help. If you're working with somebody else and you, you don't know the answers, why on earth are you trying to persuade yourself that you can muddle along and help the person that you're supposed to be coaching? You can't do that. You've got to be willing to ask for help. And I think sometimes uh, there's a, a mentality that thinks that if I'm asking for help, I'm admitting that I'm failing, that I'm not good enough. But we can't know everything. <laughs> How can we possibly know everything? I think one of the things that maybe we often talk about the importance of courage in life, maybe one aspect of being courageous is being willing to be vulnerable and show we're vulnerable and to stand up and admit when things are not, not working and when we do have, have a weakness that we need to correct. It would be very shallow people who would look at you and despise you for that. If we have right relationships as we go through life, then people will accept that and they will appreciate the fact that you are willing to step outside the, the, the relationship to find those people who can actually bring something positive to the endeavor in which you're engaged yeah that makes lots of sense i would um sort of flip that as well as and there's the theory that there is no stupid questions and so as the teacher you should sort of be vulnerable of okay if they're asking questions it's clearly because if you're not teaching them right and you should actually be the one taking ownership of the problems going on and Mm -hmm. yeah literally embody everything you just said again so really interesting thanks One thing I haven't really heard you talk much about, but maybe I just haven't looked enough, but what do you think about sort of the whole cheating? Because you talk about like winning and like developing this mindset, but then you can kind of want it too much to the point where you then feel like you might have to take drugs or do something wrong. So what would you say, as in you must have seen a lot of people that turns out were cheating in hindsight, just because if you were around for so long, 
doing things, even whether you coach someone or not. What do you think happened to make people then go and cheat? Well, actually, it's a character flaw. I think in, if you start off with a simple relationship, coach athlete, and then you can expand that as an athlete within a team or a coach within a team or in a society so on, or in a business, you start off with, you've got to be pretty clear what your common goal is. What's our purpose here? Your vision, where we, where we want to get to. But by the same token, you've got to agree a common code of practice or, or set of values as to how we are going to work together to achieve what we must achieve. You know what the rules are and you know there's a consequence for breaking them. So, And for most people, I'd like to think uh, there's almost an inbuilt honesty to begin with in life. So, for example, when you were playing football in a schoolyard, did you have a referee? No. Why? Because you all knew the rules and it was your responsibility to live within them. One of the problems, I know this sounds a bit silly, one of the big problems in competitive sport is, a, is having a referee or an umpire. Why? Because you abrogate your responsibility for keeping to the rules so that the, the referee or the umpire. It's what his decision or her decision is. And it's, that shouldn't be what it is. It should be your will to live within the values and rules that are there. Anybody who wants to violate that, it's a character flaw. It might be done out of frustration. It might be done out of all, all sorts of other things. But if you come back to my business about emotional control and making sure that we ignore the distractions, then the chances of you taking yourself to that level, whether you think it's um, okay to break the rules, is that's, you're stepping across a big line. And there's not an excuse for it. It's um, basically your character. There's a, the, maybe we've all got a dark side. And, you know, it's, quite, it's interesting that a lot, long time ago, um, there was a young man that violated the rules. And he was going to go to prison. And I remember I met with him the night before he went to prison because I was with a crowd and we were all going to take him out for his last good meal before he went to prison. And he said, you know, Frank, I stepped across the line when I did this. It was to take drugs. Actually. I stepped along the line when I did this. And I said, no, that's not when you stepped across the line, son. You stepped across the line when you thought that was an option. It's inside you. You, you don't, for goodness sake, think that the act is the problem, is the decision and the choice that's a problem and that's we've got to be we help ourselves in that of course by agreeing a set of values we will play to the rules we will play to the game we'll play for each other we will be honest we will have integrity all these bits and pieces that you can weave into the wording of your values but you've got to stick within these i mean i'm not saying that i've never broken rules in life i think we've all done it at some point um, I've got a few penalty points from my driving license for that. But the fact is, is that really a true reflection of who you are? Uh, you take the support of the rules, and the, because that's what they're there for. They support good behavior. Uh, take your, the values that we're going to have in the team and live within these. And then if there's the occasional glitch, there's going to be the occasional glitch. But let's make sure for the most part we stay within them. Yeah, that's really interesting. So what do you think about... As a human, you know, you you talk about like, you know, we're all sort of innately quite fair when we're first born and like, you know, you're literally just this sort of experiencing entity and you kind of you just learn from what you experience. And so at some point they learn to kind of consider that there's a choice that they can do this and it is an option. Like how do you think it kind of got into their head that they could do it when like other people it just never happens? Right. There are some things in life you can be taught. There are other things you can only learn. The things you can be taught are the tools of the trade, the stuff that a lecture can produce, a book can produce, and so on. That's the, these are the things that you can be taught. But the things you can learn, you only learn through life experience or experience in your particular arena of life. And the trouble with that, with experience, as Vernon Law said, is that experience is the cruelest of all teachers because she gives you the test first and the lesson second. And... The bit is, you've got to be willing to expose yourself to the test. But equally, we've got to have access to someone after the event who can help make sure that we've learned the lessons that we should learn from that experience. And for the most part, if we can stand back from it, 
if you like, the science of coaching in life is what you can be taught. The art of coaching is what you learn through experience. And the critical, central part of that, not only for the coach, but for the person who's being coached, is that the, the learning by experience is about making right choices or right decisions. Some of that will be evidence-based because you know, this is what the analysis and the statistics say. Other stuff will be judgment-based because you know that's the right thing as opposed to doing things right by the rules. It's, it's the right thing to do. And I think this, this is, what I'm trying to say is that maybe as good educators or as good teachers, coaches, mentors or whatever, maybe the, the, the trick is to provide the experiences allow the learning to happen that allow you to, to that put you into situations you've not been in before and to make choices what you mustn't do is jump across the fence and make the choice for the person you've got to let them go through the experience because once it's over and they come out then you can start honestly looking at the reflection side and what could have been done better what could have been done differently and also, one of the things I think you learn through that process is you might go into the, the process thinking at the back of your mind a question, what's the solution? What's the answer? But you come out of it with a different question in your mind. Just how many answers are there? Just how many solutions are there? And if we get into that, your whole notion of growth mindset begins to take off. Well, that does it for this episode. If this was your first time tuning in, I'd love for you to subscribe. You might also want to rate the podcast positively on iTunes. I run the social podcast app Reason.fm. So if you want to find a app where you can listen to things, talk with other listeners, rate podcasts and talk to the show hosts such as myself and the guests, then that is the app for you. Otherwise, stay tuned for next week where we have Frank again on the show talking about the four R's that'll help us do things better. Sounds like one of those, another annoying, stupid, do this and it'll change your life, but it's really good and maybe help to change my life a little bit. So I'd recommend listening. And with that, keep learning and keep growing.